Hello and welcome to another one of my Tyranid fluff narratives. This is going to be a very short one. But, believe it or not, I found a small section which talks about the Tyranids eating Sisters of Battle. And to keep with my promise of all armies to be eaten by the Tyranids, I will read it to you. And then after that, probably the Dark Eldar one, which is almost as short. The Slaughter of St. Caspalin. Blood stains the, clo the cloisters as Leviathan invades the shrine world of St. Caspalin. The world's leaders are slain and terrorized by a Tyranid assassin, and riven with panic, the planet's defense forces are easy prey. The only resistance comes from a force of sisters of battle who hold out bravely for weeks, but even they are overwhelmed when Death Leaper lures Trigons to excavate beneath their holy bastion, and swarms of Hormagants use the tunnels in their wake to flood the fortification. The loss of St. Caspalin is a blow to the Imperium, and a manifest warning that faith alone is no defense against the Tyranids. And now, for the brief battle with the Dark Eldar. High Fleet Hydra. High Fleet Hydra is only now beginning to stir from its eons-long hibernation. It was the Dark Eldar of the poisoned Fang Cabal who first encountered this still-dormant High Fleet on the very extremes of the Eastern Spiral Arm. Instead of destroying the vulnerable High Fleet, the Dark Eldar boarded the largest bio-vessels intent on bringing home new specimens back to their cabal's homunculi. However, the Dark Eldar were unprepared for the rate at which the bio-ships awoke, and every pirate that stepped foot inside one of the living ships was killed, butchered by a frenzied tide of tyranids spawned to protect the ship. The remaining Dark Eldar fleet attempted to escape, but for every drone ship they destroyed, two more took its place. Prematurely awakened from its slumber, High Fleet Hydra has accelerated its advance into the galaxy to slack its hunger. Warzone Valador there have been some times when the star-faring bio-fleets have fallen foul of warp storms, never to appear again. The splinter fleet Kraken, that was sent headlong into the Imperium by the seers of Craftworld and Yandin, had an even stranger fate. Its bio-ships later emerged from a dimensional rift into the Velador system deep in the Segmentum Solar. The Splinter Fleet had crossed the span of the galaxy in a matter of years. Worse still, it had merged right in the path of High Fleet Leviathan. When Inyandin's seers learnt of this, panic gripped them. If the biomatter from High Fleet Kraken were to merge with that of Leviathan, the resultant strains of Tyranids would be all but unstoppable, for they would combine the genetic secrets of Orc, Eldar, and human alike. Dreading the repercussions that this unholy union would have upon the craft worlds of the Eldar, the Inyandin Council implored their allies on militant Beeltan to intercede, Yet despite its swift and deadly attacks, even the Swordwind was unable to keep the High Fleets apart. If it were not 
for a shadowy bargain struck with the Dark Eldar, the paradise planet of Valadur, or Gurial, to the Eldar, it would have been the birth site of a new doom for the galaxy. By using the Fireheart, a Camerite artifact of incredible power, the combined forces of Eldar destroyed Durial in a storm of fire and violence, just as the Tyranids were about to seize their vile prize. In the process, they averted disaster. For a time, at least. And that is all they say about battles between Sisters of Battle and Dark Eldar. Short but sweet for those who play those armies. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.